Today I'm taking a quick look at the work of FC13, an 18660 light running an SFT40 LED and Roll2 firmware. It features a colored bezel, which is orange, and features the RGB LED button, which I can see I've got it going in rainbow mode right now, and onboard charging. Thanks to Workos for sending this to me to look at and review. Any links to the light and discounts that I have will be in the description below, so please check those out along with my social channels. So here is the packaging that the light comes with. It is the new updated style with uh, a full color photo on the front and just a few stats on the back. You've got a little description, then you've got a stats table, and on the bottom you've got more workos information. On your tail, you do have your specifications of the lights you actually have. It is a magnetic uh, open box. You've got a card in here that reminds me a lot of Olight to give you kind of first time operating instructions. And then uh, underneath you've got the light and all your accessories. Accessories that are included with the light are the light itself, the pocket clip, an 18650 3000 milliamp hour button top battery that is standard, non-proprietary. You've got a USB A to C charging cable, your lanyard, a bag of extra O-rings, and then a manual. So let's take a look at the construction of the FC13. It is made from aluminum and is hard anodized in black. At the current time, this is the only cover that's being offered. The light comes into three pieces, your head, your body, and your Sorry, your head, your body, and your tail cap section there. There are springs on the tail, not the head. If we look at the back here, it, the tail is flat. It is non-magnetic, and you've got a lanyard attachment point there. It's got a little bit of paneling there for grip, but not much. The body tube section there has some milling in it for grip and just some areas milled for weight relief. I will show you the threads on the tail cap there. They are square. There's a nice O-ring. They are properly greased there, no issues. While I've got it apart, this is the battery that it comes with and looks like. I tested it at 3,097 milliamp hours and it's rated for 3,000 from the factory, so that's a good sign. Up at the front, you've got the head of the light. It's got some milling in there for weight and heat relief. And uh, the, then you've got your USB charging port on the backside. Up at the front, you've got your colored bezel there for style. It is flat and the lens is recessed. The lens is glass. You can see the orange peel reflector in there and then the flat top LED. So the UI on the light is running Andril 2. And I'm not gonna go into deep depth of that just cause this is a difficult firmware if you don't have any experience with it. As you can see, there's a chart here. I will try and link to that if I remember so. It's complicated, it's confusing. Once you get it, it's great. But first time around you think, gee, what did I get myself into? It's not that bad. All that said, the light does have your ramping interface, which I've got it in here right now. You can click this by clicking three times, you can change it into stepped mode, as you can see there. So both options work good. And you've got a number of other configuration options as well. That's what people love about Andril. But again, it does have a simple UI that's a little bit easier to use, but it's still not your on-off or three-mode flashlight like a lot are. I'll, I will say that I did have trouble getting the RGB LED light to come on in standby mode. I've got the light locked out right now, which I was able to change that option to the rainbow color to show you guys that it is a color-changing LED. So I'm not sure if that's a firmware bug or just an operator error on my part. I did try several times and was unsuccessful. So on retention here, there is a couple of options. First and foremost is the pocket clip. And this is a very similar pocket clip than is what is on the uh, TS21 from Workos as well, with the only difference being where the hole location is. It's a dual direction clip here. And in the pocket, it sits fairly deep carry. You've got a little bit of space sticking out as we'll see in my picture. Overall, I found this to be a pretty good clip. The ramp angle here at the top was good and my pants didn't get stuck at all. Not bad, it does rotate and it is one direction only for mounting on the light. There is a lanyard option as well that it comes with the light. Attachment at the tail cap is probably gonna be your primary place, but you could attach it at the uh, clip there, as you can see in the hole. So size and weight, I did measure the light at 114 millimeters, the minimum diameter on the body at 22 millimeters, and the maximum diameter at the head at 27. Weight with the clip and battery came in at 121.9 grams or 4.3 ounces. And when I compared it with other a few other Workos lights, it came in right in the middle. I don't have my TS21 with me, but here is the FC11, as you can see is a little bit narrower, but longer. So a good comparison there. The 
FC13 is available with two LEDs currently. You've got a Cree XHP 50.2 at 5,000 Kelvin and an SFT40 at 6,000 Kelvin, which is what I've got here. On my Opal meter, I measured the tint on a medium output at 5783 Kelvin with a 66 CRI. The tint was just ever so slightly green to my eyes. You know, it's hard to notice it. The uh, meter does measure it though. There is PWM here, as you'd expect with an Andro light, and the beam has a small hot spot with a minimal spill, and this is what it you'd expect from the flat top SFT40 LED that is going to be more spotty and more built for throw. I measured the parasitic drain when the LED is on in high mode like it is now, but standard uh, stock, not multicolor like it is now, at 5.5 milliamps, so quite a bit higher. And then on low, pulled 156 microamps. And when the button was off, it pulled 46 0.2 microamp. So as cool as this RGB button is on its brightest mode, it'll drain the light from full to empty in less than a month. Not terrible, but not great either. So I'd recommend turning it off if you're going to, uh, you know, have this stored for a long time or mechanical lockout is another great option. Just turn the body of the light just a hair and it will break contact and the light no longer functions, no longer is a problem there for parasitic drain. Always a good practice no matter what light you've got. Since this light runs Android 2, you don't have normal stepped modes like you do in most other flashlights like low, medium, and high. Instead, you've got seven different stepped modes plus turbo. So for output testing, I only did a few on the SFT40 version version here on my Texas Ace lumen tube. I measured it at uh, 1640 lumens on turbo after 30 seconds, 640 lumens on what I'll call high mode seven of seven lumen step. And in the lowest outputs, it's sub lumens, which doesn't register on my lumen meter. So about what you'd expect, nothing uh, out of line here. I will say that the uh, rating for the 3500 lumens is for the uh, Cree version of this LED, not the SFT40. If you get on Workos website, they do have a table that shows a difference in lumen outputs between the two. I've got the Workos FC13 here, and I just wanted to demonstrate the RGB LED on the side of it. You can see it's pretty bright and does a lot of colors, so that's kind of neat. And looking at the night shots and the runtime for the FC13, this light is running the SFT40 LED and I tested it at about 5800 CRI, sorry, 5800 Kelvin, 66 CRI. And this is an Android 2 light, so it ramps. And we'll just ramp up all the way. So that's high. I tested it on my lumen tube at about 640 lumens. I can go to turbo, and that was about 1640 lumens. And being an SFT40, this throws reasonably well. You can see it is starting to rain here. So this will be a little bit shorter than normal. Here is Turbo on the Workos FC11. And you can see it's a lot more neutral, warmer beam. This is a uh, Samsung LH351D. It doesn't throw nearly as far. It's about 1,000 lumens, if I remember right. And here we are back with the FC13 in Turbo much better throw on the light but it is a cooler neutral white tint and sorry it's a cooler white tint non high cri so pros and cons with your led choice here but other than that they are similar style of flashlights but with vastly different inter user interfaces and ease of use Turbo on my light ran for three minutes before stabilizing with a few steps to get down from the nearly 1800 lumen peak down to uh, only a couple hundred where it ran. During this time, heat peaked at 46C on an uncalibrated light at around the 90 second mark. And with the longer runtime graphs here, you can see heat dissipation. And as the light does cool down, it will increase in brightness too. So that active thermal management is good to see. Total effective runtime here is three hours when starting at turbo with uh, runtime comparison of turbo with other modes, you can see that at about half power, the light gives a far greater runtime, a much more stable runtime, but not nearly as much light, out to about 13 hours or so. Recharging here, the light does feature onboard USB-C charging through this door that fits well and stays out of the way. As I open it up, you can see it's pretty deeply recessed in there, and that caused a little bit of trouble during charging. I had some cables that I use for other lights and general uses that I just had a hard time fitting in there. Not terrible, they did fit, but it took more work. The included cable works fine, so you, you'll want something that is thinner, definitely, than a fatter cable. 
Charging from low voltage protection at 2.834 volts to full at 4.150 came in at 2 hours 11 minutes with a max charging speed of 1.2 amps. It's a very flat charging curve which tapers at the end and the default LED here when you plug in a charging cable it goes orange and flashing when charged and full it goes solid orange. The light can be used when charging just uh, only its lower outputs. And the light does have a power bank feature for your USB-C devices. I really didn't test any runtimes or anything on this other than to verify that it did work with my Samsung S22 Ultra smartphone. So my conclusion would be that I wouldn't call the FC13 a successor to the well-respected and often recommended Workos FC11 for a few reasons. While the price is very reasonable and the performance is good, the Android 2 firmware UI just isn't going to be easy to use for a lot of people in my opinion, and the FC11 does have that easier to use UI. Uh, what I would say the FC13 is good for is a would be a good choice for an enthusiast who wants Android 2 or someone who wants a more advanced flashlight. This is going to throw better than the FC11 does. It's brighter than the FC11 does, but it's not high CRI. The RGB LED here is fun despite it being difficult to change in my experience. Overall, this is a good light for the right application, but maybe not quite a universal across the board recommendation like the FC11 is in my opinion. So I'd love to know what you guys think of the Workos FC13. I can't say this has been a super popular light that I've seen on the forums or any place like that. So I'd love to know if you've owned one for a while, what you think. As always, Thanks for watching these videos and liking, subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next flashlight review soon. Thanks for watching.